Hi everybody, this is part three, and for part three I'm just going to actually um, not have any video, but just show you my screen. And what I, I first want to talk to you about is that I'm actually using a Web 2.0 tool, tool call, called um, Screencast-O-Matic. And Screencast-O-Matic is a great little um, uh, video capturing tool that you can find on the internet. And so uh, the name is right there, Fast Free Screen Recording, Screencast-O-Matic. You can start recording. Notice that you can go pro for $15 a year. What go pro means is that you can record at any length that you want. Um, but you guys, I even do it for free. And what I do is, if you can keep the recording under 15 minutes, which probably for a screen recording, that's long enough, you can get it for free. And so that's what I do. And so uh, this is a great way to do flipped, especially if you have something on your screen that you want to record. And again, notice you can show the screen, you can show the webcam, or you can do both. Um, for my other two recordings, I had done both. Um, so, I just wanted you to know about this and put that on your list of, you know, things to maybe check out and, and try and um, you can do some really neat things with it and it's, it's really, really easy to use. It's very user friendly. Okay, so now where are you in terms of uh, finishing up this class today? Um, the other thing that I just want to briefly mention is that um, all along in class and so far, we have situated you in the ISTE standards for teachers, okay? So our goal is for us to help you um, develop your skills and knowledge in these five areas. So as you can see with the first two, um, or excuse me, the first three, those we're going to do a lot by um, our coursework, our labs, our activities that way. So facilitate, inspire student learning, uh, design and develop uh, digital age learning experiences and assessments, model digital age work and learning. Okay, those are all, you know, things that we're working on. If we look at four and five, those are more kind of, to me, kind of professional responsibility, professional disposition. Number five, especially, you know, engage in professional growth and leadership. Um, we're starting that in this course, but that's more, um, you know, as you continue your program at Iowa State and beyond, okay? Because, again, I've told you, you're always going to be a learner. Where this and copyright really comes in is this number four, promote and mod model digital citizenship and responsibility. Um, teachers understand local and global societal issues and responsibilities in an involving digital culture and exhibit legal and ethical behavior in their professional practice. You guys, hence, that's why at least we have to spend some time in this class dealing with, this is just one prong of digital citizenship and responsibility, but it's, a, but it's a big one, okay? It especially touches on that number A, or that letter A. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but you guys, if you look at A, advocate, model, and teach safe, legal, and ethical use of digital information and technology, including respect for copyright, intellectual property, and the appropriate documentation of sources. And so hence, that's why we want citations, all of that good stuff, okay? So we're really keying in on this standard um, as we have this conversation. And so as you think about uh, moving forward in the class, remember that you're probably always applying standard four in your work because that's what it's all about. Okay? Okay. So what's the last thing that you have to do for, for me today? You guys, this is an example of the four-factor test. I want you to think about this scenario. A student wants to include a cartoon character. I'm going to say for, for the sake of this discussion, specifically a picture of Mickey Mouse obtained from the web for a multimedia presentation. So copy it from Google Images or wherever, you know, wherever they find it. 
and put it in a multimedia presentation. Each of the four factors must be considered to determine whether fair use can be applied. Okay, so we've already talked about those four. So I want you, the next step in this flip lecture is for you to access another form. And on that form, you're going to decide, can, would you tell this student yes or no? They can or they can't use a picture of Mickey Mouse in a multimedia presentation, okay? And think of it in big picture, you know, big picture in terms, I mean, Mickey Mouse, whatever. Um, and then I would like, as you think about that, you need to put your justification. So um, really in that justification, you probably should explain, be explaining why you said yes or no to each of these four, um, four criteria, okay? So that's what you have to do to finish today's flip lecture. And I'll be interested in getting this data because it's going to tell me then what our discussion is going to be like on Tuesday, okay? So thanks for doing the flipped lecture, and uh, we will uh, see you next week. Have a great weekend.